All right, you got, you got like two neighbors. Two neighbors. All right, let's get started. So tonight, we continue our message series, Breaking Cycles. The exciting thing about this year, our senior pastor, Pastor Kent, declared that this will be our 2019 year of breakout. Can I get an amen? Amen. And I love how we have had message series on Sunday of breaking out and Wednesday of breaking cycles to support really this effort because how are we going to break out if we don't know how? And so I love that uh, the synopsis or the message series is really built upon showing us how to break from different uh, things that we struggle with. Amen? And so tonight's message title is called Miss Fit Right In. Misfit. The word misfit is like an oddball, like you just don't belong, like you're a piece of the puzzle that just isn't uh, a fitting in the puzzle in your life. You ever felt like you didn't belong, like you were an oddball? Yeah, so if you do, don't fret. You know, you're not alone. All throughout the Bible are numerous uh, examples and stories of individuals who did not belong. And God chose uh, the most unlikely, bust up, broken rejects to really turn the world upside down. Amen? Amen. And these people were the expression of, of, of God's way. He took ordinary people and did extraordinary things. That's good news. And you think of people in the, in the Bible and different disciples like, uh, like uh, Peter. Uh, Peter was that uh, hot and cold, uh, all over the place uh, disciple. Uh, he was that loose cannon. You know, anytime I feel bad about living up to the standard of Christianity, if I, I feel like, you know what, I can't do it. You know, I think about Peter and instantly I feel better. <laughs> Instantly, I feel better. I mean, this guy, and God chose him, right? This guy loved him because um, one of the examples is of, of when Jesus was washing the disciples' feet. He's washing the disciples' feet uh, on the night of Passover. And, and Peter says, no, what are you doing? And Jesus uh, wraps the towel around his waist and through an act of humbleness tries to show his disciples how to serve. And Peter goes, what are you doing? And Jesus says, you, you don't understand right now, but you will one day. And Peter's like, no, Lord, you will not wash my feet. And then Jesus says, well, then you can't have any part of what I'm doing. And then Peter says, wash my, not not only my feet, but my whole body. I mean, he was hot and cold, bust up misfit. You think of uh, people like Paul. Paul was a murderer. He persecuted the church of God, and uh, he persecuted them, and, the, and, and there's stories that he was this, this bald, short, harsh guy. Sounds a lot like Pastor Bam, except the bald. <laughs> but he was this bust up misfit. You know, even the apostles rejected him. He often went and preached the word by himself because he wasn't part of their original 12 misfit. And yet he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Misfit. How to misfit right in. You know, the key to breaking out of cycles of trying to fit in the world's mold is that misfits need to embrace being different. We need to embrace being unique. Amen? Yes. I don't know about you, but that, that natural feeling of us um, wanting to fit in, it, it never goes away. I mean, you think about when you were a kid walking into a cafeteria and that daunting feeling of not having a friend or not knowing where to sit, if you're invited or not, that never goes away. Now, I go to Dallas a lot for work, and in our headquarters, we have this cafeteria, and it's cafeteria-style sty seating. Even as a grown adult, that feeling of like, oh, okay, where do I sit? Who am I going to sit with? That feeling of just wanting to fit in never really goes away. That's a natural feeling. But how do we as believers, how do we as followers fit into the world that we live in when we feel like that oddball? You guys ready? I hope you're ready. That's the million dollar question. How does the follower of Christ fit into this world? You guys ready? Get your pens. It's two words. It's very profound. Very profound. Two words. How do we fit into this world? Here you go. You don't. <laughs> Write that down. 
you don't. It's like an apple trying to be an orange. It cannot. It's like a girl trying to be a boy. You cannot, right? You are created a misfit, and there's nothing you can do about it. The word of God says in John chapter 17, verse 14, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of this world, just as I am not of this world. You know the cost of being a misfit, misfit is? You've been called a fool. You've been outcast, isolated. Amen. That's what the cost, you being persecuted. And there's so many undercover Christians because of this fear of being different, of this fear of being persecuted. We want to share the love of Christ, but we don't share the righteousness of Christ. Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sin. That's the righteousness. He made right what we could never make right. Christians, rise. So much of our time is devoted to success when he's calling us to significance. So much of our time is, is, is devoted to impressing others when he's called us to impact the world. And tonight's message is about misfitting right in. It's God's greater plan for each of us. And tonight I'm going to share with you three quick points that outline the how and why. And, and, and our first point begins with a call. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. So our first point, jot this down. Calling all misfits. Fitting in will rob you of your purpose. Yeah. Fitting in will rob you of your purpose. <clears throat> you see, the struggle we face as misfits is that we're so obsessed with trying to look like everybody else around us, we forfeit what God has for us. We're so obsessed with, with, with trying to blend in that we never get on the right track to our destiny as we learned this past Sunday. We get stuck in the cycle of people pleasing. We get stuck in the cycle of people pleasing. And so what do we do? We imitate others. We imitate others. And here's what I learned. And you know what? I learned this not in the world. I learned this in the church. And I think my labs, there you go. I learned this in the church. Here's what I learned. Fitting in or that desire, that ungodly desire to fit in is not isolated to the world outside the church. It's right here. You know, a lot of times people come to church and there's this deep obsession to, to, to be in uniform and be like everyone else that we start to, to mimic each other. We do. In the church, people, everybody secretly wants to be the most gifted person. Come on. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Everybody wants to be the most gifted person. You mean you don't speak in tongues? <laughs> tongues is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. What? I don't know about you, but the Holy Spirit is not faceted to one gift. And it's the Holy Spirit who decides which gift is administered by which person. And listen, the Word of God says, why do you, require, why do you want to speak in tongues only? And it benefits really little. Nobody understands that language, but yet asked to interpret the tongue. You mean you don't prophesy? Psh. So the fear of being judged or the fear of not fitting in the church, we start to try to fit in someone else's mold. Listen, we only have one jack. And we can only handle one jack. <laughs> so we can't fit in other people's molds. You see, David, the shepherd boy, when he went to go and, and fight Goliath, you know, the people wanted, he went to fight Goliath. And what did he have? He had a slingshot and five stones. And the people said, surely you're going against a giant. You need a, a armor. So they put on Saul's armor, King Saul's armor on David, and it didn't fit. And he took it off. And he still, still brought Goliath down. You don't need to fit in another person's mold. You are a misfit for a reason. And so we often say, well, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 says this, We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. The message version says we're the Messiah's misfits. 
One of the biggest misfits of, of bi- biblical times was Moses. Moses was born a Hebrew, Hebrew, but raised it in Egyptian. He lived in a palace, but he was destined for the wilderness. God's got a plan. Look to your neighbor and say, God's got a plan. And he chose to, 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 to suffer affliction with the people of God instead of enjoying the power, prestige, and prosperity in the position of Egypt. And God has, God has nothing against finances and prosperity. He took uh, Esther from being an orphan and put her in the palace. So God's got a plan, amen? The struggle with us is that we, we get stuck in the cycle of trying to fit into the mold of the world when we're destined for greater. God sent you here to this earth for a reason. God sent you to this city for a reason. And God sent you to this church for a reason, amen? And listen, it's not to accomplish somebody else's task or somebody else's destiny. We already have a BAM. We already have a Austin. God don't want to see them again. (laughs) So if we're not careful, we get caught up in the cycle of the hype of the church instead of really being the eye that God called us to be or be the ear that God called us to be or the hands that God called us to be or the feet that God called us to be. The word of God says, you know, shall the eye say to the hand, I have no need? No, each and every one of us has a purpose in God. Jot this down, number two. So how do we do this? Here it is, the answer. Misfits have it already. Look inward and not outward. You have it already. You know, the number one excuse we give God is, who am I? I'm not gifted. I'm not capable. I'm not qualified. I still have sin in my life. Blah, 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 blah. Excuses. It's excuses. If you read your word, you'll see that God calls all kinds of people. He calls thieves, fishermen, prostitutes, widows. He calls all kinds of people. And people get stuck in their comfort zones because they they look like their misfit characteristics and they think that's a flaw. No, that's a gift. That's not a flaw. That's a gift. Don't waste your lives. Bam's dad, um, when he was alive, you know, he used to say, You know, and when I translate that, waste of life. If you would just bring that life to, to grow my taro plantation, it would be better. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. You know, churches never go beyond their divine capacity because they're more concerned on how to, for, how to figure out the dream. They're more concerned about how they get the resources rather than looking inward at what they already have, that the finances are already in there. God never sends anybody anywhere without giving them what they need. Our problem is we think we need more than what we have. The bathroom project, I don't know, this wasn't part of my message, but the toilet project, or the, sorry, I demoted the advanced project to the toilet project. <laughs> listen, listen, this is on my heart. It's not part of my message. It's not about the toilets, okay? It's not about the toilets. And we think it's about, okay, expanding it so we're comfortable. No, God is calling us to give up some stuff, then he'll bless us. Give up what we would normally do somewhere else and build the toilets. And then he will send the people, amen? It's already here. It is already here. So many folks forfeit their, their calling because they, have, they, they feel like they don't have what it takes. So many pastors forfeit their calling because they feel like they don't have eloquence of speech or they don't have effectiveness or or energy or or captivated. They don't know how to talk. Listen, I didn't learn English until I was in elementary. And look, look, God uses misfits. A friend of mine at work calls me B.E. You know what that means? Broken English. (laughs) That's what he calls me, B-E. And you know what? That's all right. 
Moses said to God, uh, 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 I don't have uh, eloquence of speech or I stutter. Excuses. We already have what, I, what we need. It's already in us. Don't look outward and start looking inward. Stop thinking if I can just get the right book, if I can just get the right podcast, if I can just get discipled by the right person. No, it's already inside. Matthew chapter 14, 18, 19 let me just paint a picture. It's Jesus and his disciples. They had been preaching all day. The multitudes were there with them, and it was getting dark. So one of the disciples tells Jesus, hey, yo, um, I think we should send the people back to the village. It's getting dark, and they haven't eaten anything. Let them go back to the village so they can buy themselves some food, right? Really what he was like, I'm tired. Y'all need to go. <laughs> I'm tired. Y'all need to go. I want to eat my, my bread and my fish. Y'all got to go. And, and Jesus looks at them and, and he says, well, you feed them. And they're like, with what? With what? And he says, well, what do you have? He says, we just have five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus says, bring, that, bring, bring them here to me. Jesus is saying right now to all of us misfits, what is it that you have what does he put inside of you? And he says, bring it to me. That's the only way it's going to get developed. Amen. That is the only way. He says, bring them here to me. And then you all know the story. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven. And he blessed and broke it and gave loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. Do you know that they fed over 5,000 men, not even including women and children? So if you give Jesus the little that you do have, a Jesus will bless it. He will break it, right? That's why there's some pain sometimes, right? But then multiplication comes from there, amen? You already have it. You already have it in you. And Jesus said uh, you know, when he sent out his disciples in, in the book of Luke with instruction, he said, take nothing for your journey, don't even take any money, no, no staff, nor bag, nor money, not even a change of clothes. Why? Because Jesus provided it. It is already in them. Every person who is in this earth don't need to look outward. You need to look inward. You need to position yourself. Look up to heaven. Ask God to use you. Look inside yourself. God has hidden a gift in each and every one of us. And here's the good news. It's an inherited gift. You know what that means? Nobody can give it to you. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work hard for it. It is already in you. When the word of God says that he, you are fearfully and wonderfully made and that you were knitted in your mother's womb, what do you think he was knitting? Your plan and your purpose, your gift. He was putting that inside you. And you know what he's saying? He's saying that you need to duplicate what the seed that he put inside you. So if he has put an apple in me, there is no way, no matter how much I pray, no matter how good I, I am, there is no way I'm ever going to be an orange. I am an apple, and I need to duplicate that which he has given me as a misfit. Amen. Amen. The book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, 12, and God says, Let the earth bring forth grass and the herb that yields seed. And the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. <laughs> Whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb that yields seed according to its kind. And the tree that yields fruit. Whose seed is in itself according to its kind. Should I say more? You're going to duplicate the seed and the kind that God has called you forth and knitted in your mother's womb. Amen? Yeah. It's already in you. You got to break the cycle of looking outward and start looking inward to embrace who God created you to be. God already has given it to you. You, 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 you read all kinds of encouraging stories. And Samson, he beat the enemy with the jawbone of a donkey. Why? Because he had a jawbone of a donkey. <laughs> That's what was readily available. That's what he had, what readily, readily available. He didn't go out looking for uh, David's, uh, you know, um, slingshot. No, he used what he had. 
and through generation to generation that God's message hasn't changed. He is still looking for misfits. He has still called forth misfits to this day. You are modern day prophets. Do not be silent. And do not worry. We tell our son this all the time. Listen, little Bam, your name is Bam, but you're not daddy and don't try to be like daddy. All right? Only you can be you. Only you do you the best. So don't try. You know what? And here's, here's, here, church, let me say this. And don't criticize others for walking in their misfit skin. Amen? Don't criticize others. When you hear a speaker, well, they're kind of, well, no. They're walking in it. They're walking in their calling. Amen? And we're going to end with this. Number three, the glory is God's, period. The glory is God's, period. We are misfits because we are called to this earth to fulfill a purpose. There's some sort of need in this earth that only you can fulfill. That's why you're called forth. You're not an accident. I don't care how you came about. You are not an accident. Amen? Amen. My brother and I, my older brother and I are about 13 months apart. So I'm the younger one, so I'm often called the accident, right? There's pictures of, of me and my brother when we were babies. I was this baby, and he was barely, a, you know, out of diapers, and he's, like, hitting me because <laughs> I came too soon. But we have such a special relationship. God has a reason. No matter how much you, you try, it's God's way, amen, because he's got a purpose, The glory is God's. You aren't here for yourself. What you are carrying inside is not for you. And if you don't walk in your misfit calling, you're really a generational thief. Let me say it in this context. Can you imagine if Pastor Ken and Pastor Lisa decided not to come to Vegas? We can't be generational thieves, no matter how hard it gets. Listen, I know living in this world is difficult, and we have our challenges. You know, we think, oh, America, land of prosperity, and, you know, other countries don't have what we have, but we have our own challenges living in America. Everything is so politically correct. Everything is, you know, you're walking on eggshells, but listen, You can still love with the love of Christ, but stand in your righteousness. Don't lower your standards because somebody else says that's not love. Love has boundaries. Love has boundaries. If love didn't have boundaries, then husband and wives wouldn't be inclusive of themselves. There's boundaries. One husband, one wife. No matter how hard it gets. Believe me. Our son's 16, so I mean, we've been together 18 years. It gets hard. But don't let the sun go down with you angry. The enemy is going to set up all kinds of potholes, all kinds of nets to disqualify you from your calling. Amen? Amen. The glory is God. You know, I grew up in Samoan. We ate a lot of mangoes. We ate a lot of mangoes. I loved growing up in Samoa because, you know, I laugh because when we go places today, our kids say, did you pack some snacks? You know, I got to pack fruit snacks and chips and Capri Sun. As a kid, I remember when we'd go out to play, all you took was your machete. That's it. All you took was your machete. Because you would go and play in the bushes, and when you got hungry, you cut down the mango or cut down the papaya. When you got thirsty, you would climb up the coconut tree and get real coconut water. I lo- you know, I loved it. So I loved mangoes as a kid. But you know what I, I realized about the mango tree, really any tree for that ma- matter, is that uh, mango trees don't eat their own fruit. Right? So a mango tree, to get their nutrients, or any tree really, they get it from their roots. That's where they get their nutrients. 
your roots. So many of us get tossed to and fro because we don't have roots deep enough in the word of God. One little thing. And we go from marriage and job and church and friends and family. Oh, I defriend you. Okay. Does that make us not family anymore? <laughs> right? I mean, the trees get their nutrients from the roots. The trees don't eat the fruit. You as a misfit, your fruit, the fruit of your life is not for you. It's for God and other people. You're here to feed other reasons. How many of us are eating our own fruit? How many of us are eating our tides? Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Likewise, misfits, your gift, your seed inside of you is not for you. It's not for you. It's for others. It's to supply a need for someone else in your job, in your home, in your neighborhood. And here's the bottom line. It's not about us. And we say that so much that it's so cliche, but really it's not about us. I never went to the mango tree and said, ooh, your bark is so nice. Your leaves are so nice and green. No. People are not supposed to be attracted to you. Let us not be that Christian who draws people unto us. No. No, you draw them unto Jesus. Let's not be the people that say, let me teach you something. No, no, let me, let me show you what I've learned. Let me show you what he has taught me. Matthew 21, 18, 19. And this is Jesus. He says, now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately the fig tree withered away. If you're a mango tree, you're expected to bear mangoes. If you're an apple tree, you're expected to bear some apples. And Jesus was talking to the religious heart of Israel. We looked the part. Looked like a fig tree. Where's the fruit? Sitting in the synagogue in high places, praying long prayers, wearing white. Just saying. The glory of your calling is God's. It's not for you. People are not supposed to be attracted to you. You're the tree. And ain't nobody care about your leaves. Ain't nobody care about your bark and who your neighbors are, the the papaya tree or the, <laughs> the banana tree. Ain't nobody care about that. Ain't nobody care about how much money you got. You know, it all looks good on social media. That's not even real. It's not even real. We have a friend who is an engineer. He grew up, wanted to be an engineer his whole life. He went to school, went and got his professional engineering uh, license, when did his internship, provided for his family, big, beautiful house, kids went to private school, he lost his job, he's a believer, loved the Lord, was an elder on their council, lost his job, but he was still faithful and said, God, you can still use me. You know what God did? God took his kids out of Christian school, they started homeschooling their kids, God sent their family to Mexico, and he used his engineering degree to build wells. It's not our plan. And you think, why are these things happening to me? No. God sent you to fulfill a purpose. It's not our plan. And we, in church, we, we take these tests, like these gifting tests, right, in church, so that we can see what we're passionate about, what we're, what we're naturally good at. You should take that so you know where, where, so you can get a hint of where, where, where God is calling you and what you naturally fit. You know, if you don't like people, I suggest you don't be an usher. <laughs> if you don't like people, we have a spot for you in the media team. 
You don't even have to talk to anybody. Just communicate on email. We put you in this black, dark box in the back. And you'll love it. I promise you'll feel alive. You'll want to come to church. And listen, if you don't have a nice tone of voice and you, and you can't hold a tune, then the worship, play, worship team is not for you. Okay? It's not a place for you. Right? We're all called to worship, but only few are called to worship behind a microphone. Amen? You're a misfit for a reason. You've got qualities that only you have. If you don't rise up and accept your misfit calling, then you're a generational thief. We're going to end with this as the worship team comes up. Our three points. Don't, don't, don't try to fit in. You'll rob yourself of your purpose. Look inward, not outward. You already have what, what you need. God's already given it to you. And lastly, the glory is God's, period. Amen? Did y'all receive that? Amen. Will you rise with me?